Mali is a landlocked country in the Sahara. A staggering 92% of women and girls here are subjected to female genital mutilation. Known as FGM for short, this harmful traditional practice involves the cutting of part or all of the female genitalia. FGM is really a tool to subjugate women in general, and in particular to um, suppress her sexuality, to ensure her virginity until marriage. The situation of FGM in Mali is very severe. We're looking at really a public health disaster. Unfortunately, the government doesn't quite see it that way. We are seeing families cutting their daughters at a younger and younger age. One of our partners, Khadija Sidibe, who is the director of AMSUP, the local organization there, has been working on a recent case of a two-year-old who was uh, subjected to FGM. When she saw the child, the child's legs were so swollen the child could not walk. She um, explained the way she was wriggling in pain until a trickle of urine would uh, come out of the child's body. The centuries-old cutting is not isolated to Mali alone. FGM is practiced in all the countries neighboring Mali except Algeria. Mali stands out, however, because it does not have a law against the practice. All the countries bordering Mali where FGM is practiced, including Burkina Faso, Côte d'Ivoire, Guinea, Mauritania, Niger, and Senegal, have banned female genital mutilation. So what that means is that Mali is now becoming, or has become, a haven for circumcisers, for parents who want their girls cut. People either come from surrounding countries into Mali to get their girls cut. Circumcisers cross the borders to perform FGM. On June 21, 2009, Equality Now brought together 24 grassroots anti-FGM activists from 17 African countries to Bamako, the capital of Mali. Equality Now hoped that bringing activists from countries where anti-FGM laws are being implemented will help the Malian government understand why it is crucial for the country to pass a law prohibiting FGM. We had the privilege of meeting with a number of ministries, including the Ministry of Health and the Ministry for the Promotion of Women. Um, our meeting with the Ministry of Health was underwhelming. They still believe that FGM is guided by culture and by social mores. But there have been many, many violations, including slavery, that were in fact cultural practices, harmful cultural practices that are human rights violations. Until now, the Malian authorities have focused on changing the culture surrounding FGM by raising awareness of community leaders, circumcisers, parents, and girls in practicing communities. But these efforts are bound to be ineffective because they are not complemented by a law that makes FGM a crime. People are more likely to abandon an entrenched harmful practice if there are adverse consequences to continuing with it. The current National Action Plan for the period from 2008 to 2012 intends to adopt national legislation against FGM. The government of Mali is failing right now its women and girls when it comes to FGM. When we talk to our partners in Mali, the one thing that they ask people to do around the world is really to build up pressure against the government of Mali until they pass a law that prohibits FGM in that country. It is our responsibility to um, assist those on the ground that are working against FGM, both financially, technically, uh, and from an advocacy perspective. And it's an easy responsibility to fulfill. 